Did someone say JWST deep field? No? How about a medium deep wide field? If so on that second one, then you're in luck because that's what we've just got. JWST has been staring back into the far past to see some incredibly early galaxies and the results are stunning. Oh, and remember those other really distant galaxies we thought it had found but needed to wait for more follow-up data to confirm? Well, we now have that data and it turns out they really are that distant. So let's take a look at all of this galactic time traveling right here. A medium deep survey for JWST means that the faintest objects in the image are about 1 billion times fainter than we could see with an unaided eye. And this landscape from the PEARLS program is aptly named. It is stunning and pretty much every object here could be pulled out and framed on a wall. They are all beautiful and detailed and a real testament to the quality of JWST data. With that huge mirror collecting enough light to see some of the faintest galaxies we've ever observed. The term wide field here means that the entire program will eventually cover an area of sky that's about one twelfth of the area of the full moon. It's amazing to me how many galaxies and other objects can be seen on such a small patch of sky. And I think it really helps you start to comprehend the incomprehensibly large size of the universe. This snapshot we're seeing here is actually only about a quarter of that total survey as well. So really this area is about 2% of a full moon. This particular patch of sky is known as the North Ecliptic Pole, meaning it's 90 degrees away from the position of the sun. The image itself is made up of eight different wavelengths of near infrared light from JWST's NERCAM instrument, and also incorporates three colors of visible and ultraviolet light from Hubble too, providing us with another example of how powerful it is to use these telescopes together. The most incredible thing here is the resolution and detail we can see in so many of these distant galaxies. And many of these things are being seen for the first time. That's despite this area of sky being previously observed by Hubble and our largest ground-based telescopes too, purely because of the seeing power of JWST. Light from the most distant objects in this image has been traveling for about 13.5 billion years to reach the telescope. And it's a real pleasure to now be seeing those early galaxies with our own eyes. We can see things that we didn't expect to have the resolution to see, like globular clusters around distant elliptical galaxies, streamers and tails coming off of some of the galaxies, knots of star formation in some of the spirals, and thousands and thousands of objects, even in the background of the whole vista. We're really looking at the building blocks of the modern universe. Let me know in the comments if you can spot all of those things, or just let me know what your favorite thing you can see here is. Some of the most interesting ones have been boxed and enlarged for us by the team. And if you have keen eyes, then you might have noticed that some objects in the image have multiple sets of diffraction spikes. This is because this image is a mosaic of many different pointings of the telescope. And sometimes its orientation changes in between individual images. So when we have overlap and that orientation changes, if we then combine that data together, we see multiple sets of spikes in the final image here. It's nothing funky going on with the objects or with the detectors. It's just an effect of creating such a large mosaic. Another nice thing about this area is that it's observable 365 days a year by JWST. So we can keep revisiting the area and watching anything that might be evolving. This can include objects moving in the frame, or things like supernovae going off that might appear and disappear over time. In the future, this data will also be combined with spectroscopy from JWST to give us more accurate data about the distance and ages of many of these incredibly old galaxies. Speaking of spectra, the other exciting JWST update is confirmation of some ages of some incredibly distant galaxies. Data from the telescope over the last few weeks and months had given us quite a few candidates for infant galaxies. I covered a few of them on the channel, but the distance and ages of these galaxies was just an estimate. It was approximated using something called photometry, which is basically using the light we receive from an object to approximate its age. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it's a way of getting a quick estimate of age, but with a lot of uncertainty. Now, new data has used spectroscopy to get more accurate ages. 
This technique takes a lot more telescope time to do, but it's much more reliable and gives us the confidence to confirm these incredibly old galaxies. We can now confirm that the light from them has been traveling for more than 13 and a half billion years, meaning these most distant ones formed just three or 400 million years after the Big Bang. This sounds like a long time, but since the universe is now almost 14 billion years old, they formed when the universe was only 2% of its current age. The image itself is from the JADES program. It actually covers a part of the famous Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It took 10 days to collect all of this data, and we can see a really nice way of understanding how spectroscopy works here. It involves breaking down the light we receive into all of the different wavelengths that make it up, and counting how much of each wavelength we see. When we do this, we notice that there are some patterns that we can see in all of the spectra. One of those is called the Lyman break, this sort of jump feature here. And in the four spectra visible here, the feature is in all of them. This feature is always emitted by galaxies at pretty much the exact same wavelength. But as light travels through the universe, it loses energy, and we can think of it as getting stretched by the expansion of the universe. This means all wavelengths of light get longer, and the features, like the Lyman break, move to longer wavelengths. So the further to the right we see the feature on a spectrum here, the more distant the object, and the wavelength we see it at tells us exactly how distant that galaxy is, because it tells us how much it was stretched by the expansion of the universe. Since we know pretty well how fast that expansion has been throughout time, we therefore know how much space that light traveled through to reach us, and so we can turn this into an age. Well, specifically, this process actually gives us the redshift of a galaxy, which is basically just a number that tells us how much the features have moved to longer or redder wavelengths. But then we can turn this wavelength into an age. A higher redshift is an older age, so the top galaxy here is being imaged as it was about 300 million years after the Big Bang. We now know that these really are some of the most distant galaxies we've ever seen, and that's incredibly exciting. However, the next thing to do is, of course, look for even more distant ones and keep trying to do even better. JADES has hundreds more hours of time approved for 2023, when it will do another deep study centered on the famous Hubble Deep Field, and then it will also return to the Ultra Deep Field for more imaging and spectroscopy. So we know there's gonna be lots of awesome stuff just like this coming out in the very near future. Finally, we have a very quick update to one of the most famous JWST images that was among the very first to be released. That's the Carina Nebula. I have a full video breaking down the image on the channel and talking about all of the beautiful structure, hidden outflows and star formation happening here. So do check that out if you want all of the details. Now though, having been able to spend more time with the data and looking at one wavelength of light in particular, scientists have been able to identify another two dozen or so outflows of molecular hydrogen. Using light that has a wavelength of 4.7 microns, they've been able to locate these fountains coming off of young stars in the image. Molecular hydrogen, like that present in these jets and outflows, is a vital ingredient for new stars, and acts as a great way of identifying these star-forming regions. The young stars gather up material using gravity, and this material ends up surrounding them in gassy shells, rings, or disks. As this happens, most of them end up ejecting some of this material through jets and outflows coming off of their poles, due to magnetic fields forming around the new stars. These jets then plow through the surrounding environment, energizing other surrounding material and often causing it to glow. That's exactly what we can see in these JWST images, nearby molecular hydrogen glowing because of these jets. Give me your thoughts on all of this in the comments below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel for all things JWST and space in general. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.